Hey guys, Justin from Deep Dive Stocks here with another data dive. Today, we're going to be diving into GME. Obviously, GME has had a pretty exciting past few days and some pretty remarkable after hours price movement. So today, we're going to look at VOEX, we're going to look at the options, and we're going to try to glance and see what the market and or how the market is responding to these pretty, uh, pretty large price movements. Let's get started. So we're going to start with VOEX. If you haven't, uh, or if you haven't, if you're not familiar with VOEX or you haven't seen it before, uh, I just popped up a video on my channel about it. But essentially, it monitors the stock's stability, and the idea is that we want VOEX to be inside these two horizontal lines. When VOEX rises above that horizontal line into the inhibition zone, or when it falls below the uh, bottom horizontal line into the propagation zone. A stock is considered unstable. Now, clearly, GME is probably not the most stable stock, so you don't need VOEX to tell you that. But there are a few interesting patterns inside of VOEX related to GME that are pretty specific only to GME. One of the first things we, this pattern we can see kind of starts forming now. So, for instance, notice VOEX is spiking up. This magenta line is spiking up pretty significantly into the inhibition zone. And we may notice that that also happens uh, before. So it happens obviously in February of 2021, and then it happens again in June of 2021, and then it happens again in November of 2021, and now it's happening t now in March of 2022. Did I say that right? Yeah. The idea is that it's unique to GME that these large spikes that are actually pretty characteristic to GME as well, happen every five months or so. And it seems like every time VOEX spikes like this, the price shoots way up. Clearly, the first time it happened in February of 2021, and then happened again, and so on and so forth, as we just saw. What's unique about VOEX spikes is they typically um, produce price like depreciation. So a stock will rise quickly in price if that price is too unstable the VOEX will spike up and then typically you'll see the price fall over the next few days however GME as we can see these significant VOEX spikes are met with the opposite behavior what's called VOEX divergence or VOEX uh, incongruence and the idea is that GME for whatever reason whatever is provoking this instability isn't responding the typical way that most other stocks in the market how most other stocks in the market uh, res market response. So we see when VOEX spikes up, instead of falling, the price skyrockets. When VOEX spikes, instead of falling, the price appreciates. Now, past behavior doesn't, you know, is not necessarily the most reliable thing for predictive returns or for the future. But we can see that it is pretty odd that every five months or so, GME seems to have this repeating pattern, and so. The question that VOEX is giving us today is, is this pattern going to repeat? And if it does, how far up is the price going to shoot? So that's VOEX. We can look at the other, some other aspects of the report, namely the snap graphs. So snap graphs take VOEX's behavior and maps it into future returns. And all we have to do on the snap graphs is look to see where the crosshairs are placed. So for instance, today on the one day interval, so that would be tomorrow's prediction, we see that the snap graphs are showing us positive price action. Conversely, way up top here on the five day or the one week, five trading days or one week interval, we also see positive returns. The positive returns are so high on the two week or the 10 trading day that it actually broke the snap graph. We don't see the top of the, the horizontal line. But what's interesting is the model is still telling us that on the one month time interval, uh, negative returns are to be predicted, and we can tell it's negative because it's below the bottom or the below the horizontal line or the zero on the y-axis. So we have positive returns predicted on the one day, on the five trading days or one week. What seems like also for the ten trading days or two weeks, but negative returns predicted on the one month. And what's interesting is if we go to yesterday's snap graphs. Do 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 do. We have a nice positive prediction for today. Now, I don't think the snap graphs anticipated a 30% jump in price, but 
The beauty of the snap graphs is they're optimized for the direction of price movement, not the, not the magnitude of price movement. And we can also see that the change in BOEX shifted the five day in, uh, prediction from negative to positive, pretty substantially so too. So maybe bullish in the near term and then evolving long term predictions for snaps. We can move then on to the other components of the report and we see here we have the expected price range up top and then on the bottom we have volatility. Now the expected price range or these dotted lines is the 68% probability of where the price will go according to the markets kind of like uh, pricing mechanisms, mainly derived from volatility. Now it's not a big surprise that lately the price has gone well above the market's expectation, or so it's outside of these uh, dot, these dashed lines. So it's not too surprising here, but it's a pretty good visual indicator of just how much the market or how much GME moved outside of the market's expectations. What's interesting, if we move on to the shorting graph, so this is the short ratio, so it's the amount of shorting that happened today to the, uh, the total amount of uh, exchange volume. Despite the large increase in the intraday markets, um, shorting didn't seem to increase that much. Uh, I know that the volume probably was significantly higher, yeah, so 14 million volume today versus like the average, ten, or average two week volume of 2 million. So this data point is probably a little skewed a bit because the the total volume was significantly larger, but it overall fits in line with the current uh, trend where shorting didn't really increase that much. This probably has to do, I know GME has a pretty low like available shorting float, so that probably has a little bit to do with it. We can then move on to the options graph. The options graphs are pretty cool because on the left we have how the options are today, and then on the right, we have how those options changed from the day prior or the average change per day over the past month. So today we see a, lar a large amount of uh, out of the money calls were opened up and a healthy amount of out of the money puts were also opened up. We can then look at these options changes and look at the Delta to give us a brief, you know, like a rough uh, estimate of were those calls sold to open or were they bought to open, were those puts sold to open, bought to open, so on and so forth. And we see today that the Delta rose on GME from 3,000 to 65,000. And so it's telling us that overall there's a more positive delta on the on the stock, which is pretty stabilizing. But it also means that if you hear any chatter about gamma squeezes on GME, that just isn't the case right now. GME has actually seems to be uh, more insulated from a gamma squeeze than it was before. And in fact, we can see on the average delta for the past two weeks, GME has been in a gamma squeeze, which is probably why the price has been going down pretty steadily. So we see that the, we can rule a thumb, rough estimate, we see that these calls are actually sold to open, right? So they're providing long delta to the options dealers. And these puts are probably a mix, right? High volatility gives us uh, you know, a propensity to sell calls. So if we look at the out of the money puts, we see about 75% of them are sold to open from the retail side. So they're giving, so, you know, a breakdown of 75.25 for long to short delta. So there's a little bit of a mixed bag there. Now, going back to the expected price range, what we can expect for the rest of the week, although today we moved 30.72%, and this table right here just takes the dashed lines from above and extends a little further out. So we see that today's expected movement was 4.94%. We overshot that a little bit with a movement of 30.72%. And I think tomorrow's movement of 5.76% has already been uh, shot over with the after hours movement. But this gives us a rough understanding at least or idea of where the market is comfortable with GME moving. And clearly we are well above that right now. The hedging matrix, this tells us how many shares have to be purchased or sold per point move in the price or the volatility on GME. And right now it is, so for every time the price moves up by one dollar volatility moves up by one point 65,601 shares have to be sold uh, those numbers are relatively small especially considering the overall volume that is happening on GME right now but they can add up pretty quickly so today for instance we had six 
So what, 29 points for the price and then 17 points for IV. So that's 30, 46 points, 46 times 60,000. And we start getting into the few million shares that just have to be sold in order to hedge all of the options on GME. So it can add up. But again, today's volume was 14 million, which is what? Three, four times, five times, the six times the normal amount. So this hedging matrix may come into play a little bit more as volume starts to taper out, but these options that are entering the field still have to be hedged. So that's GME's data for you guys. I hope you found it in, uh, helpful. So just to recap, I think the most interesting thing for me is this five month rotating cycle, a uh, repeating cycle on GME where Vorex begins to spike and then the price begins to appreciate. Um, that is what I'm going to be keeping my eye out the most. That seems the most significant for me right now. And I'm going to honestly just play it forward. So the goal is once this spike occurs, like complete, so it goes up and then it comes back down. I'm going to anticipate some price appreciations and play with it, play with GME on that front. So thank you guys. Thank you for coming. I hope uh, this was helpful. Please uh, let me know how I did. Let me know if there's any stocks that you, uh, you want to go over and good luck and happy trading. Bye.